Hey everyone, how are you? Welcome back to another video. Now, I am going to be reading through a zombie survival guide app that I got because I figured, you know, why not see what we can learn about zombie survival in case the Zeds, zombies, deaders, walkers, infected, whatever you want to call them, in case they rise from the dead and try to eat the flesh off our faces or something, might as well learn what we can, right? Let's go. Survival tactics, we'll start with this one. Okay, so... Oh my gosh, this may have to be like a series because that's a lot to read. This will have to definitely be serious. Okay, so first we're going to start off with limited approach defense. Limited approach defense is something that can and should be applied in a variety of assaults. The basic principle... Excuse me. Is to use mobility against your opponent and allow only a limited number of enemies... Enemies to approach at once. A small scale example would be a lone defender with a drywall hatchet at the top of the ladder of a, of a billboard killing one zombie at a time. So, pretty much this means what, what this thing is take out one individual zombie at a time. Don't take on multiple because you know how The Walking Dead makes it look like um, you can go through a zombie skull easily. That's not so true in real life. In real life, you have, you have to stab straight through the zombie skull, and skulls are a lot thicker than the Walking Dead makes it look. So, yeah, pretty much you want to take them out. If you have a blunt weapon, it will take longer than if you had like a bladed weapon. A bladed weapon will, unless you know how to use, unless the weapon, the blunt weapon you're real, using is really like heavy. You like a sledgehammer could kill a zombie in one hit. Depending on how you use it. So anyway. Well anyway let's keep it going. By engaging only one enemy at a time. You change the fight against zombies to a fight against fatigue. See that's exactly right. You have to remember that. No matter. What melee weapon you're using. You will get tired. Whether it's heavy or lightweight. You, you, you will get tired. And you will sweat. Which is why most people. What, which is why, you know, in most army movies, people are wearing gloves so that way the weapon cannot slip out of their hands if they become really sweaty. The principle can and should be applied in every conf confrontation. On a larger scale against zombies, a box can cannon, canyon, whatever, or an elevator should be used. Care should always be taken sure that there are no more hostile forces that can be effectively coped with. You should consider what you are going to do with the zombies you kill. Will leaving them in place assist you in blocking more zombies or will it inhibit you? So, pretty much you can use the dead bodies as distractions to your advantage. But you see, the zombie doesn't care whether their meal is living or dead as long as they eat. So you can use the bodies to pos potentially distract zombies. If this is the... If it is the later, you will need to consider how you clear the bodies. Burn them, do whatever you need to. If I needed to, I could use like a dead body as a distraction to keep zombies from getting to an area. See, we we as humans are smart to where we can out, outsmart zombies. The number of zombies you might receive through the limited approach is likely to vary. But generally, this tactic is used in a situation where you will be outnumbered, so you might want to consider working in teams. See, we all, everyone can't be independent forever. We all, you see, you need someone to watch your back. Exactly. One responsible for killing and the other responsible for, well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but okay. Supposing about the, uh, I know I'm adding in, in my own little comments, but that's because this is just supposed to be like a little zombie survival guide if I want to add in my now I don't know who wrote this but they definitely know they definitely have been sitting up you see it's always guys go get this app it's if you ever if you need to go learn how survival tactics for zombies then this I recommend number of zombies you might receive oh I already read that this approach will also allow you to switch jobs and it may provide opportunity for respects. Limited approach may be associated with entry exit points of your base, but need not be. What the heck? That 
Okay. A limited approach to fence structure may be constructed anywhere with the intent of luring and killing zombies. Well, excuse me. The most important thing to remember with the limited defense tactic is to understand at what point you make a final retreat or close slash seal slash barricade the bottleneck when things are getting too risky. This is assuming that you have planned to deploy this tactic beforehand. However, this tactic may be used on last ditch defense of a location or as part of a planned retreat. And Infilate and defilate, I don't know. Infilate and defilate are concepts in military tactics used to describe a military formation's exposure to enemy fire. In addition, infilate fire is used to describe gunfire directed against an infil infilated formation or position. The words themselves come from French, enfiler to skewer, defiler to scroll. I did not know that until now. In the broadest sense, these terms simply mean an advanta advantageous position to fire from enfilade or position of cover from incoming fire defilade. Technically, a formation or position is in enfilade or enfilading. If weapons fire can be directed along its longest axis, for instance, a trench is enfilated, if the opponent can fire down the length of the trench, oh my gosh, that's a lot of meeting. A column of marching troops is enfiladed if fired on from the front or rear such that the pro projectiles travel the length of the column. Oh my gosh, I love reading, but normally it's easier to read in your head than... But I have to read it. If you guys just want to... I don't know. Maybe let's keep reading. I don't know. A rank or line of advancing troops is enfiladed if fired on from the side or flank. The benefit of enfilading an enemy formation is that by firing along the long axis, it's easier to hit individual troops within that formation. So this is a military tactic, in case you guys haven't figured that out already. Adjusting the elevation, I said evolution, what the heck? That's no, I don't think that's the word evolution. Anyway, let's keep going. Of the weapon merely directs the fire to a different point along the axis of formation. Although traversing the weapon is more likely to result in a miss, enfilade fire takes advantage of the fact that aiming at a target is easier than. Uh, excuse me, gosh. Uh, excuse me, sorry, yes. A target is easier than correctly estimating the range to avoid shooting too long or short. Finally, Projectiles that miss an intended target are more li likely to hit a different target. Hang on, I just... <sighs> a lot to read. Within the formation, if firing along the long axis. Stray strafing firing on targets from a flying platform is often done by enfilade fire when using forward weapons and defilade fire when using side-mounted side -mounted weapons. Again, zombies, firing high-caliber rounds down a narrow hallway of infected is an excellent example of enfilade fire. They are difficult to miss, and each round has a chance at penetrating multiple zombies. <laughs> uh, technically, a unit or position is in defilade or defilating if it uses natural or artificial obstacles to shield or conceal, particularly when referring to a position on the reverse slope of a hill or within a depression in level or rolling terrain. Holy moly, that's a lot to read. Anyway, guys, um, when I end this video, I'll, um, I'll make a series where I read this guide. You guys can use this if you don't want to download the app. You can just go watch my videos. And hopefully this will help you. Okay, where were we? Okay, I think we were at, um, when referring to a position on the reverse slope of a hill or within the depression and level or rolling terrain. Defilated. <sighs> Positions on hilltops are advantageous because, or advantageous, I don't know how to pronounce it, because they allow a defender to take advantage of the height of the terrain without suffering the disadvantage of being silhouetted against the sky. 
However, because this is still a dead space that cannot be engaged with direct fire will be created in front of the position. More practical examples of defilades are windows, trenches, sandbag walls, and two. Excuse me. Ugh. Excuse me, sorry guys. Like, and to a limited extent, cars and other improvised cover. Schoolboy take them. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have heard of this where, you know, I think those pictures pretty much explain it, so I'm not going to read that. Yeah, the pictures pretty much show you what the schoolboy takedown is. One dude goes behind the zombie, bends down, then the dude kicks the zombie, then go. Yeah, that pretty much self explanatory. I'm not going to read that. Premise, or premise, however you want to pronounce that. A zombie will always attack the closest human or survivor to him or her if it's a female zombie. If a survivor is unsure about their ability to crush the skull of the zombie because of inexperience, I'm pretty sure I have the strength to kill a zombie. I hope a lot of you do, because we need to be able to... I hope everyone does. I think a def preferable situation would be to attack the zombie as it is down. In my opinion, attacking a zombie while it's down could pose more of a threat if there's multiple zombies. I know, that's just me. I, I honestly think I sound kind of stupid. But that's just that's just how I feel. Like, e I know zombies aren't exactly easy to kill, especially since they can only do a headshot. But yeah, that's just me. You guys might have other opinions. But maybe let's keep reading. The second human that is now targeted can facilitate this by tripping up the zombie while it is focused on the first survivor. While a targeted survivor can usually accomplish a knockdown on a zombie without assistance, thanks to a naturally poor balance, fortunately, there are many variables as to how the zombie will fall. The helper ensures that not only does the trip up succeed, but that it falls in a prone and helpless position, giving the initial survivor time to swing and limiting the angles of attack for a clean strike. Okay, execution. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, guys, I'm getting this video here. I hope you all enjoyed. I will read execution and then hopefully be done with this by the next part. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you next one. I love you all and goodbye.